Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Julia Hayes. I'm one of the associate pastors here, and it's my great joy to welcome you to this service of worship here at Wrightsville United Methodist Church. We are so, so grateful that you are taking time out of your day today to worship with us because we know that the Holy Spirit is going to meet you wherever you are. We'd love the chance to get to connect with you and to know that you're here. So if you would take a second and either click the link that's in this video's description or scan the QR code that will show up on your screen in a few moments. There you can let us know that you're worshiping with us and let us know if there's a way that we can be praying for you this week. Now I invite you to take a big deep breath and let's prepare our hearts for worship. Please join me now in our opening congregational prayer. The words will be found on your screen. Let's pray now together. Holy and loving God, you have created us, redeemed us, and called us to be co-workers in your mission. Jesus, deepen our discipleship so that we can make disciples of all nations. Holy Spirit, transform us so that we can take part in the transformation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you now to affirm our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Wherever you are, I invite you to stand as you're able or to lift up your heart. Let us now affirm our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Please join me now as we go before God in prayer. Let's pray now together. Holy and loving God, we thank you for gathering us together today in your name. God, we thank you that you are big enough and expansive enough that you can unite us together in your spirit even when we are apart physically and across time. We thank you for your love that is bigger than we ever imagined. Love that tears down our divisions and changes our lives. Thank you for calling us, even us, to be part of your family. God, help us to live lives that are worthy of this calling that you have given to us. God, we give you thanks and praise for another school year. We thank you for all of our teachers and educators who have been your workers in the world, caring for children and students. We pray for all of our children as they now have a time of rest this summer. Lord, would you revive them and help them to grow. We pray also for all of our parents and guardians as they adjust to new rhythms this summer with kids home from school. We pray also for the North Carolina Conference of the United Methodist Church as we gather this coming week in Greenville. Lord, give us your wisdom to know the way that we should go. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us. We pray for revival in our churches, for our clergy, and throughout our connection. And God, we pray for your whole world. We pray especially for the war-torn parts of our world, including Israel and Gaza. Lord, please give hope to the hopeless. And we pray for all those whose needs are especially close to our hearts today, and we lift them up before you, either out loud or in our hearts. God, we thank you that you not only hear our prayers, but you listen to them, and you are trustworthy. Now, God, help us to mean what we say as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we transition now to a time of reflection and generosity, I'd like to remind you that you can always give to support the ministries of Wrightsville United Methodist Church, including this, the vine, by mailing a check or by using our website, rightsvilleumc.org. Let us now continue to worship God. Wrightsville kids, I'm Pastor Julia, and I'm so happy to have this time with you today. I have a question for you. Does your family ever have some kind of a special meal? Maybe it's a special meal for your birthday where you get to pick whatever you want to eat. Or maybe you have a special time at Christmas where you always eat the same kind of foods and special people come over. Or, of course, there's the most fun special meal, Thanksgiving. We all love that, right? Well, did you know that we actually have a special meal that we eat together as a church family? It's called communion. We have that meal at this special table here. Communion remembers when Jesus had a special meal with his friends. And he asked all of his friends to remember him by having the same kind of meal. So that's why we have communion today. I bet at home, maybe, if you're having a special meal, you might put out something special, like 
a special tablecloth. We always put out a very special white tablecloth on our special table called an altar when we're having communion together. We also use special dishes. We use a special cup that's called a chalice and a special, very pretty plate. You know, it seems like with all of these special fancy things, we ought to have really special fancy food. But the food we have for our special meal is actually pretty normal. In fact, you can get it from the grocery store. We have grape juice. I love grape juice. And we have bread. Sometimes, if we're lucky, it's even Hawaiian bread, which is really, really yummy. When we have this meal, the food that we eat is normal food, but it becomes special when we eat it together because we believe that Jesus is here with us when we eat it. Are there any special things that you say when you have a special meal? Maybe you say, happy birthday, or Merry Christmas, or happy Thanksgiving. Well, we have special words that we say at communion to help us remember what a special time this is. I want to teach you one little part of that. When we have communion together, there's words that just me and the other pastors say, and then there's words that you get to say too. This is one part of that. This is called the mystery of faith. We say this every time we have communion to remember who Jesus is. Okay, I want you to repeat after me. Are you ready? It goes like this. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Okay, let's repeat after me. Ready? Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Those are special words that help us to remember the special meal that Jesus had with his disciples. I hope that the next time that you are here with us in the sanctuary, you'll be excited about having this special meal together. Thank you so much for joining me for this time today. Let's say a prayer now together. And I'd love for you to echo the words that I say after I say them as we pray to God. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for making me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for this special meal. I love you too. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor David Haley, one of the associate pastors here at Wrightsville United Methodist Church. And I have the honor and privilege of being able to bring the message today. I'm always thankful when our outstanding pastor, senior pastor, Pastor Doug, gives me the opportunity to preach. And uh, I always promise him I'll do my best and I'll try not to be long-winded. So... We'll see how it goes today. But I am very glad to be able to share this time with you. Um, our scripture reading today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 8. I'm going to be reading, uh, be reading some selected verses beginning with verse 26 of Acts, chapter 8. The Lord's angel said to Philip, Go south along the desert road that leads from Jerusalem to Gaza. So Philip left. An important Ethiopian official happened to be going along that road in his chariot. He was the chief treasurer for Candace, the queen of Ethiopia. The official had gone to Jerusalem to worship and was now on his way home. He was sitting in his chariot reading the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit told Philip to catch up with the chariot. 
Philip ran up close and heard the man reading aloud from the book of Isaiah. And Philip asked him, Do you understand what you're reading? The official answered, How can I, unless someone helps me? Then he invited Philip to come up and sit beside him. And then skipping down to verse 34, The official said to Philip, Tell me, was the prophet talking about himself? or about someone else. So Philip began at this place in the scriptures and explained the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to a place where there was some water. The official said, look, here is some water. Why can't I be baptized? He ordered the chariot to stop. Then they both went down into the water and Philip baptized him. After they had come out of the water, the Lord's Spirit took Philip away. The official never saw him again, but he was very happy as he went on his way. This is the Word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our midst that our hearts might be prepared to hear your word. May your anointing be upon the one who preaches, that his sins might not hinder your word. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. There are things in life that catch us by surprise. I heard about a family with young children who were out riding in the car one afternoon, and a convertible was going past them. They came to a stoplight. The convertible stopped also. And then a young woman in the back seat of the convertible stood up and was waving. She wasn't wearing any clothes. Well, before either of the astonished parents could say anything, their five-year-old son said, Look, Mom, that lady isn't wearing a seatbelt. <laughs> oh, the world through the eyes of children, huh? Well, today, or this Sunday, is the third Sunday after the day of Pentecost. And that was the day when God poured out the Holy Spirit on the followers of Jesus after He ascended into heaven. And that was something that caught the disciples by surprise. Now, the Holy Spirit is easily misunderstood. Uh, we might, for example, think of the Holy Spirit in terms of, of a snake handling church. Um, anybody want to go to a service at a snake handling church? Probably not, at least not up close and personal. Or you might have seen those bizarre videos and reels on the internet of churches where people are acting crazy or throwing themselves on the floor or running until they collapse or other unusual actions. I heard about a guy who went to an old stuffy church one Sunday and as the pastor preached, uh, just about after every sentence, the man was shouting, Hallelujah! or Amen! And finally, the head usher went over to where the man was seated and leaned over and he said, Are you all right? And the man said, Oh, I'm fine. I just have the Holy Spirit. And the head usher said, Well, you didn't get it here. And if you don't quieten down, we're going to have to ask you to leave. <laughs> well, the reality is that the Holy Spirit is a very important part of our lives as Christians and as disciples of Jesus. You see, there was no church prior to the day of Pentecost. That's why we call it the birthday of the church sometimes. But there was no power for the church to carry out its mission and ministry. Now, just a quick review. Jesus had been crucified and buried, then gloriously resurrected on that first Easter. It only took Jesus about 40 days to convince the disciples that He really was alive, that He really had been resurrected from the dead. And then He gave them their marching orders. And we find that in Matthew uh, chapter 28, verses 19 and 20, 
where he says, go into all the world and make disciples. And also right before he ascended into heaven in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, where he says that uh, when the Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. That was their marching orders. Then Jesus ascended into heaven and the disciples, the disciples, basically retreated to the upper room in Jerusalem for the next 10 days. And you know what they accomplished? Well, you can read about it in Acts chapter 1. They elected a replacement disciple to take the place of Judas who had betrayed Jesus. And that was it. Doesn't that sound just like a church? <laughs> we think we've really done something. If we have all our committees filled, um, we consider a major decision deciding what color to paint the church. But in reality, these are all minor business matters in the life of the church. The big business of the church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ, to proclaim the gospel, the good news about Jesus, and to minister to people in need in the name of Jesus as a witness to our faith in Jesus. Those were the tasks that Jesus left to His disciples and the other followers when He ascended into heaven. And yet, in the first 10 days after He ascended to heaven, the disciples took care of one matter, one minor matter of church business. And that was it. But that all changed on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came into their midst like a mighty rushing wind. They were filled with spiritual power that helped them to overcome the two major barriers to fulfilling their God-given mission. The first barrier was overcoming their inhibitions. When the Holy Spirit came into the lives of these disciples, they began to proclaim Jesus with an unprecedented boldness and enthusiasm, a fearlessness that they had never had before. The other barrier that was overcome was their prejudices. On the day of Pentecost, people from all over the known world who had gathered in Jerusalem heard the gospel in their own language. And there were people from Asia, from the Middle East, North Africa, Europe. They had different colors of skin. They spoke different languages. But on the day of Pentecost, through the power of the Holy Spirit, every person heard the gospel in their own language. Their prejudices were overcome. And a short time later, Philip, that we just heard about in our scripture today, Philip would be explaining the gospel to an Ethiopian official, and then Paul would be preaching to Gentiles. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, the followers of Jesus were able to accomplish the mission given to them by Jesus Himself. They could not do it in their own strength and power. Now let's look for a few minutes at Philip. Um, if, if we were to look back in John chapter 12, we find an interesting incident that took place. There were some Greeks who came and wanted to meet Jesus. They wanted to meet Him in person, and they came to Philip knowing that he was one of the disciples. Well, Philip lacked the confidence to know what to do. So he took them to Andrew, another disciple, and then he and Andrew ended up taking them to meet Jesus. According to John's Gospel, this happened right after Palm Sunday, right after Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. So maybe just a few months to no more than a year or two after, Philip encountered this Ethiopian official, the event that was described in Acts 8 that we read a moment ago. Now after the Holy Spirit came, after the day of Pentecost, Philip had the confidence to approach this Ethiopian official and ask him if he understood what he was reading. The Ethiopian was reading a copy of the Old Testament book of Isaiah. 
And he explained to Philip, well, how can I unless somebody explains it to me? Well, let's put this into perspective. Let's say you're, you're walking on the beach and you see someone catching a few rays and you notice that they're reading a book. As you walk by, you notice that they're reading the Bible. What are the chances that you, like Philip, would go over to them and ask them if they understand what they're reading? Uh, yeah, right. Not likely. <laughs> That's not something that we would do in our culture. We're afraid, first of all, that people might ask us a question that we don't know the answer to. And we're also afraid that that just might seem awfully intrusive. Uh, we would be very hesitant to do that uh, because of our inhibitions. And look, not only did Philip explain to the Ethiopian official what he had been reading, but his encounter with him resulted in the Ethiopian believing in Jesus and being baptized all in the same day. The problem with too many churches and too many Christians these days is that we act like the disciples before the Holy Spirit came. Oh, we take care of minor business matters of the church, but our inhibitions and our prejudices prevent us from fulfilling our God-given mission. Now, when you join a United Methodist Church, you take membership vows to faithfully participate in the ministries of the church with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. God is calling us. God has called you to take your faith seriously. And God promised to empower and equip us for every good work. God has not asked us to do anything for which He was not also prepared to be at our side, strengthening us, guiding us, helping us. We see that in Philip's encounter with the Ethiopian official. God, working through the Holy Spirit, gave Philip the desire and the ability to overcome his inhibitions and his prejudices with the result of the Ethiopian official believing in Jesus and being baptized. Philip even had to run after the chariot to catch up with him. And the Spirit told him to do that. In other words, that was something Philip probably would not have done earlier. But because he felt led to do so, he did it. Now, I asked you earlier, if, if you saw a person on the beach reading the Bible, how likely would you be to go over to them and ask them if they understood what they were reading? And we were all pretty sure that we would not likely do that. Well, about 20 years ago, the United Methodist Bishop of the Methodist Church in Cuba uh, was visiting in the United States and was a guest speaker at our annual conference. And he told a great story about a Cuban pastor who was on his way to preach at a church. And as he was on his way, he passed by a field and there was a cow out in the field didn't see anybody, and he kept on going, and, and suddenly he, he had this, this sense, this, this feeling, this overwhelming feeling that he should go back and preach a sermon to the cow. Now, his first thought naturally was, I must be going crazy. People would think I was crazy if I ever even told them that I had this thought. I'm not going to do that. And he kept on going on his way, but the feeling was so strong, finally he said, okay, I'll go back and preach to the cow. So he turned around and went back. The cow was still out in the field. He looked around, didn't see anybody. So he went ahead and preached a sermon to the cow and, uh, and preached the gospel, explained the gospel to the cow. And uh, when he was finished, uh, the cow kind of looked at him, but that was it. And the pastor said, well, I, I felt like I was supposed to do that. So he went on his way. And, and over the months that passed, he pretty much forgot about it. Well, about a year later, 
the pastor was back in that same area. He was preaching at a church very close by to where he had preached to the cow. And after the service, a man came up to him and said, you're the preacher that I saw preaching a sermon to the cow. The pastor was kind of embarrassed and he said, uh, well, I, 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 didn't, I didn't know anybody was watching. I didn't see you. And the man said, well, of course you didn't see me. I was hiding because I was there to steal the cow. But when you preach a sermon to the cow, I listen and I heard you explain the gospel and I opened my heart to Jesus. And now I'm an active member of this church. You can't make this stuff up. We need to focus ourselves on being the church, on being Christians, as the church was immediately following Pentecost. We need to be like Philip. Let the Holy Spirit overcome your inhibitions and your prejudices so that when God brings people, people who need God, across your path, you can help them find their way to God. You can invite them to church. You can offer to help them. You can offer to pray for them. We are in a position to have an incredible impact on the lives of persons in our community and around the world. There are people who need a Savior. There are folks struggling to survive. There are persons who are struggling to put their lives back together following the breakup of a marriage. There are young persons who are faced with a myriad of competing philosophies and peer pressures who need faith in God. God has called us to be believers and disciples, not disciples, but disciples. God has called us to represent Him in the world. Our hands and our feet are God's hands and God's feet. God has given us a great calling and a great power with which to accomplish the tasks that He has given us. And what is our mission from God? To make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world and to minister to people in need in Jesus' name. May we always say yes to God's call on our lives and God's call upon our church. May God empower us with the Holy Spirit to be faithful, authentic disciples of Jesus. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, empower us, overcome our inhibitions, our fears, our prejudices. Help us to be true, faithful, authentic disciples of Jesus. And help us to be committed to the mission that Jesus has given us. Just like Philip, Lord, we never know who you're going to bring across our path in life or whose path in life you're going to bring us across. But help us to always be ready and willing to speak on your behalf and to encourage others in their faith journey. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our service will continue with Holy Communion, and so we invite you to get a piece of bread and some liquid so that you might consume the elements uh, with us. And so if you don't have those, why don't you hit pause on the video, go ahead and get those things together, and come back and join us. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another, praying together. Merciful, Merciful God, God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have, have not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We, we have, have failed to be an obedient church. church. We, we have, have not done, done your will. will. We, we have, have broken your law. We have, have rebelled against your love. We have, have not loved our neighbors, and we, we have not heard the cry of the needy. Need. Forgive, Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
I invite you to continue to pray in silence. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the, In the name, name of, of Jesus Christ, Christ you, you are, are forgiven. forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give, give our thanks, thanks and praise. praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection. You gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This is the body of Christ, broken for us. This is the blood of Christ, shed for us. You're invited now to consume the elements that you have in your home. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you've given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So as we come to the end of our service now, let us go forth into our daily lives, resolve to be true, authentic, faithful disciples of Jesus. Resolve to be the hands and feet of Jesus in the world today. And as we go, may God's blessing go with us. The blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.